and welcome to week four of the Patriot Quilt Along. This is Patriot, and we are now in week four of Making It. Uh, up to this point, we've talked about fabric selection and yardage adjustments you might want to make depending on which methods you're using to make the units. Week two, we discussed how to make uh, flying geese, and then last week we discussed how to make half square triangles. At this point, you should now have 36 of these. And it's important that you have trimmed them to size. They should be trimmed to two and a half inches. In trimming them, that's important as well because you'll be cutting off the dog ears. And that will help with the next step in reducing the bulk. Because this week, week four, we're making these pinwheels out of four half square triangles. And if you take a very close look at the pinwheel, let me zoom it in for you. This center here is the intersection of a lot of points, as you can see, and that re results in a lot of bulk. So there are two different ways to deal with that bulk in the center, and we'll get to that shortly. First, we need to talk about how to make your pinwheels. You just simply lay out four half square triangles. Now, you could lay out your half square triangles like this, or you could lay them out like this. There's no right way or wrong way, but it's important that you lay all of the pinwheels out the same way. Otherwise, you're gonna have spinning this way and spinning that way and spinning this way. And, and if you want that, that's fine, but typically you make them all the same. Uh, in the pattern, um, it is this this way, so I'm going to get these out of the way so we don't get confused. Now, as a tip, when you, after you lay them out, and by the way, a lot of people get confused with the whole layout process, so let me talk about that for a second. I've got my four half square triangles, so I just lay them up all facing the same direction. Then I take the first one and simply rotate it. And I take the second one and rotate it and rotate it again. Then I take the third one, rotate it, rotate it, and rotate it, and that forms my pinwheel. It might also help to have the picture of the pinwheel from the pattern in front of you so that you keep looking at it, keep referring to it, and making sure you're laying out your half square triangles correctly. Once you have them correct, it helps to have something like this, a little tray that you can use to take your half square triangles that have been perfectly arranged over to your sewing machine so that they will not get out of order. Now, to sew the pinwheel together, you will sew the top row and the bottom row. So notice all I'm doing is just flipping them on top. And the other thing you should notice, well, um, notice that I press mine open, so my seams are going to butt into each other. If you had pressed to one side like this and that, they would be butting together because there's opposite seams. So they nest really nicely. So just make sure that that's happening. And then if you need to put a pin in, I typically do. Kind of hold them in place. And make sure you're matching up the bottom corners. Don't like it to slip. So once you have those pinned properly, we'll pin these as well. And again, you could have nesting seams here or open seams, whatever, however you pressed your half square triangles, it's fine. Just make sure that they are nesting into each other somehow um, so that they'll meet up properly. Those points will meet up properly. Now I've got my two sets. I can go over to the uh, sewing machine and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch here 
and a quarter inch there. And then I will get that. Uh, notice that the points, they're a quarter inch from the edge. At least they should be, because when you sew your seam, then the points will come together and will meet in the center. So once I have this, I'm going to press these two. And I do recommend, even though I press my seams open typically, I do recommend pressing to one side for this part, because I'm going to show you a trick for reducing the bulk in the center. And to do that, I'm going to need to have my uh, seams pressed to one side. Um, I'm pressing to the dark. Do which one? Now, with both sets pressed to the dark, let me arrange them again. I'm going to put them one on top of the other and see how those seams nest. together very nicely because they're pressed in opposite directions so again I will pin here oh you can if you want pin right here where that um, diagonal meets the seam and that should be your center point and you can check on the other side to see if you were to push this pin exactly through it would come out, see, there, which means I'm gonna get a perfect point, a uh, perfect center meeting point. Then I like to pin my top edges, make sure they're not gonna go anywhere. Sometimes I don't bother to pin, but you know, I will this time. And pin the bottom. Now that it's all pinned, it's ready to go to the sewing machine where I will sew a quarter of an inch long there. Let me bring them around. Here's two that I have already sewn that way. This one's not pressed very well, so let me press it again. I'm gonna handle these too much, they just get all <laughs> out, of, out of whack. Okay, so I've got two sets that I've stitched that quarter inch seam. Uh, in this set, notice that I've, I've actually repressed my half square triangles so that they were pressed to the dark. Here, this set, I'm starting with open seam, openly pressed seams for my half square triangles, but I'm still just, you know, uh, these are pressed to one side and then I'm sewing half the quarter inch there. Now, there are two ways to deal with the bulk and the classic way is, results in this, which is a, you spin your seams in the center and you get this cute little mini pinwheel. Uh, let me hold it up this way as well so you can see. That's called spinning your seams. So to do that, I have, again, sewn these and they're in opposite directions. I just bring my fingers in there, right? See the seam right here, right under that and right under this seam and I just go like that to kind of rip the um, or tear the break. There we go. That's a good sound to use. <laughs> uh, ripping and tearing sounds too scary. You, you're breaking the stitches in the center there. Now that I have broken them, I just push one side up and the other side down and play with this center here for a second and I get that beautiful little center. And all I have to do is press, press down, and that will make that center nice and pretty. And flat, that's really the whole purpose of this, is you want that center to be as flat as possible so that your block is flat and also so that it um, reduces the bulk there in the center. It doesn't come up. Now, another way to solve the problem, perhaps simpler, uh, because I like to press open, you can just simply press that center seam open. 
and I I just press. Notice I pressed this to one side and that to one side and then the center seam I left and pressed it open and it for me I don't have a problem. It, it flattens my block and that center is nice. But if you want to spin your seams, let me get another one here. Do I have, yeah, this one. Um, again, I'm just gonna try to get my fingernail under there and under there. And then I'm gonna twist to kind of break those seams open. Then I come here and let's see, I push up and then down and push that center with my finger, flatten it. So up and down and push the center. Then I come in with my iron and let it do the work because it is heavy and it is hot and it's on my wool pressing mat and that is really going to flatten that seam. Once I get it, see, there's the lovely pinwheel. Once I get it flattened on one side, I flatten it on the other. I like to let it rest and let the uh, iron do its work. Oh, if I wanted to press it even flatter, I could lay my clapper on it and clapperize it. I'm gonna trademark that, I swear. Um, clapperize it. <laughs> And that will flatten too because the, the clapper radiate, helps to radiate the heat back down and also the weight of it helps to flatten everything. So you can twist your seams, twist them, or you can simply press them open. Just make sure that center looks nice. And then the last thing you'll want to do is measure your pinwheels to make sure they're the right size. Um, they should measure four and a half inches square. Now as you're, if you're trimming at all, make sure that you're taking the two and a quarter inch mark and putting it right on that dead center so that you're trimming evenly from side to side. I don't really think I need to trim this, um, but uh, trim both sides and um, Let's see if this one needs to be trimmed. Okay, yeah, maybe just a little. The two and a quarter inch mark there, two and a quarter inch mark there. Oops. And the two and a quarter inch mark should also run through the center, by the way. So trim up your pinwheels and let's see, I've got four, uh, but you need to make nine total for Patriot. Oh, no, I have five finished, so I'm almost done. Really, this part will not take very long at all. Uh, the spinning of the seams is a little hard. Sometimes you may have some problems making everything meet in the center and I would just unsew it and sew it again because really a nice looking pinwheel is so satisfying um, that it's worth having to sew again if, if needed. This week's assignment is to make nine pinwheels and to trim them, make sure that they measure four and a half inches and then we will meet again. Um, I believe this time it's in It is next week. Um, it's so that we will put together the block. Um, no, I think actually we have two weeks. I'll put it in the uh, video description so you'll know. And then I will know too when we're going to meet again. <laughs> um, thank you very much for quilting along with me. And uh, please give this video a thumbs up so other people can find it. And I'll see you back here again when it's time and look through the video description, it'll tell you when. Also, if you want more of a verbal photo type tutorial for this, take a look at my blog and uh, you'll, there's a post in the video description, which will lead you to my website, my blog, 
where I will have uh, a post about this week's assignment and maybe drop a few more hints or a few more tips or at the very least it'll be step-by-step -step photos so that should help you as well if you uh, thought that this went a little fast. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think that's enough for now. I will see you later on the internet. <laughs>